a ball is thrown vertically upwards from an origin with an initial velocity of 40 meters per second and its displacement s meters after t seconds is given by s is equal to 40t minus 5t squared. Draw displacement time, velocity time and acceleration time graphs on the same axis to illustrate the motion of the ball during its first 10 seconds of flight. So what we're going to do, we're going to do this using GeoGebra. The GeoGebra app is in the notes of the video. So what we've got here is a ball. Okay, if we start the animation, so we press start, what happens is the ball will go upwards, get to a certain maximum height, and then gravity will start acting and bringing it down. It actually now goes past the origin and goes a bit, a little bit further. So you could imagine this might be the situation where someone's standing on the edge of a cliff. They throw a ball vertically upwards, it goes up, and then falls down lower than the cliff. Now you can reset the animation at any time like that. Okay, so we've got the ball, just do a look at it one more time. The ball goes up, reaches the maximum height, it's slowing down, and then goes goes down and probably speeds up as it goes down as gravity acts on the ball. Okay, so what we're going to do is now look at draw a set of axes. First of all, we're just going to look at displacement against time. So if we click uh, this, we will see the function given in the question 40t minus 5t squared. And again, we'll start the animation. So the ball goes up, starts to slow down, gets to a maximum point, and then goes down further, right past, right down to like minus 100. So if the man's standing there, maybe the ball's hit the sea or something. Okay, how can we get the um, graph of the velocity graph? Well, the velocity is going to be the gradient of this. The problem is this is a curve, so its gradient is changing as the curve goes round. So the, the gradient is actually changing. So what we can do is we can draw what is a tangent to the curve. And you would have done this at IGCSC and measure the tangent. Now you wouldn't be able to do this uh, uh, yourself, but the uh, software will do it for us. So let's just have a look at that. So I'm gonna click here, we're gonna draw this tangent. So this is what the tangent looks like at uh, initial velocity when t look one and 40. You can see the gradient of the tangent is actually 40 at this particular point, and you know it's thrown up with 40 meters per second. So if we start, what we can see is the tangent gets smaller and smaller and eventually comes zero and then goes back down and becomes negative. All right, so the initial velocity is at 40. At the maximum height, this will, uh, which will be at t is equal to four, the velocity is equal to zero, and then velocity acts in a downwards direction. So the graph of the velocity is a straight line graph which is 40 minus 10t. You can think of what y is equal to mx plus c. So it's minus 10t plus 40. You can think of that graph being, and that's a, that equation of that straight line. So it's a straight line. So here, the uh, velocity, initial velocity, as it gets towards its greatest height, because gravity starts acting on it, it will slow down here. The, the velocity is zero, and then it goes downwards. The velocity will go move uh, downwards. Now, you can actually get displacement from a velocity time graph. So we're just going to now look at that. So just reset the whole animation. We don't need the tangent anymore. So we'll click this here, this button here to click to see displacement and then start the animation. Because if you measure the uh, area underneath the thing, you can see here it's 80, the maximum height. And at the end here, it should be the displacement should be minus 100. So the area underneath the graph and the horizontal axis gives us displacement. OK, we can find the area of this triangle, 4 times 40 divided by 2. Uh, 160 uh, divided by uh, 2 is 80. And then here we're going to have... Uh, 6 times 60, 360 divided by 2, 180 
and therefore when you subtract the two you will get a displacement of minus 100 meters so it means it's under the uh, starting point by minus 100 so the area under the velocity time graph will give us the displacement now if we want to work out the total distance don't forget the area above the curve is positive and this is negative okay and therefore uh, they will start to cancel each other out this is why you get minus 100 but how if you add that area and that area together you will get the total distance traveled by the ball which is 260 don't forget the total distance is going up down back to here and then adding on an extra 100 okay right so uh, so you can actually see that quite easily because it goes up uh, 0 to 80 that's 80 back down as eight, another 80 160 and then down another 100 which is 260 uh, meters of total travel okay but displacement these will cancel each other out later you do a thing called integration which will actually give you this area here and similarly you do differentiation of this curve to get this curve now to get the uh, ex acceleration you get the acceleration from the gradient of this graph here which is in fact uh, minus uh, 10 because the, we know the gradient of this is minus 10 we only need to take some known points let's take from here uh, that is 2 that's 20 20, uh, minus 20 minus 20 divided by 2 will give me uh, minus 10 however we reset everything we can see the whole animation okay and all we'll see is that the acceleration graph is a horizontal straight line it's gravity acting against the thing gravity is possibly uh, minus 9.8 but I made it minus 10 on this to keep the animation simple okay so we've got minus uh, 10 here as uh, acceleration it, it acts downwards it's gravity okay so what happens here here is that the velocity is positive but the acceleration is negative but the so therefore the ball is decelerating it's, it's not uh, going so fast so this acts of deceleration but here the uh, velocity is negative because we've got a ne negative gradient here is negative okay and therefore we can see that this uh, is negative as well so it's neg negative so therefore what happens it's going to start to fall down much uh, faster this is how it's all, all going to work okay so this has been a video so if we go back to uh, this so pressing reset will do everything so the the geogebra applet uh, shows you everything in the graph so there is the whole of the graph I hope you've enjoyed this video and perhaps learned something from it um, uh, the GeoGebra applet will be a, a link in the notes of the video on YouTube so thank you very much uh, for watching and I hope you've understood